Hey everyone, my name is Eddie Joe. I'm an intensive care doctor who has a quite a bit of a social media presence because of all the evidence-based stuff I'd like to discuss to help us all take better care of patients. I will tell you the article that I'm going to be discussing today is free for you to download. It's open access. So I definitely recommend you go check that out and don't trust me and don't trust uh, these slides that I've created. It's just a good thing to do. So especially with all the misinformation that's out there today. Nonetheless, moving on, I'm going to be talking about passive leg raise and stroke volume to determine fluid responsiveness. The reason why I think this is very important to talk about is the fact that many people don't know what fluid responsiveness even means. And basically, they think that fluid responsiveness means you give somebody X amount of fluid and watch your blood pressure go up. But in reality, that's not what we should be striving for. We should be giving people just the right amount of fluids to see either a change in their stroke volume or cardiac index slash cardiac output. That should be our goal. If we don't have a way to measure these things, we should get better at that because it does lead to Im improved outcomes in our patients. And that's ultimately what we need. You know, the days of giving people arbitrary fluid boluses willy nilly just to make us feel good about ourselves should really go the way of the dodo. Moving on. This paper, which was published just two days ago, actually in chest, as I mentioned before, it's free. You should definitely read it. Don't trust my slides, but all the authors are there listed on the upper right. And I will also have links to the article in the description box below. And if you learn absolutely anything from my article, please hit the like button, share, subscribe, as that definitely helps my channel grow. This trial was called, is called the FRESH trial, which is a pretty cool name. Uh, and, you know, they got the acronym from Food Response Evaluation in Sepsis Hypotension. And shock, <laughs> you could tell that they threw in the hypotension in there just to make it fresh. So what they did is that they used passive leg raise, which is the methodology to uh, determine fluid responsiveness. It's, it's a tool where you give somebody approximately 300 cc's of their own volume. And there are different ways to do it, which include either looking for cardiac output, which is something I will talk about in the future, or in this case, they use stroke volume. And they use passive leg raise combined with stroke volume versus usual care. And ultimately, this study was a multi-center randomized unblinded clinical trial. The fact that it's unblinded means that it's privy to bias. That being said, I think the authors did a fantastic job in this trial and, you know, it's worth our consideration. They looked at 124 patients in this, in this study and they assigned them two to one, uh, being more so favored to the passive leg race and stroke volume patient population over the usual care. And the way that they determined fluid responsive, or the way they defined it, excuse me, was an increase in stroke volume greater than or equal to 10%. This definition of fluid responsive uh, varies from study to study. Most of the time, stroke volume is greater than or equal to 10%. In the cardiac output studies, it's anywhere between 10 to 15%. So just keep an eye on that when you look at other studies, if you choose to do a deep dive into all of this. Moving on, the primary endpoint, and you know, I'm not going to go through the methods and all that because everybody will just click off and unsubscribe and not understand the darn thing. But the primary endpoint was that they found that patients who receive passive leg raise plus uh, stroke volume monitoring receive fewer fluids. And this was statistically significant with the p value that's listed there. The mean difference was negative 1.37 liters. So you might ask yourself, well, the difference between the two being just a liter, less than a liter and a half isn't a big deal. But one of the things you need to consider is people who are getting fluids when they need it versus not getting fluids, uh, excuse me, people getting fluids when they need it versus getting fluids when they don't need it. It is known that approximately 50% of patients who are hypotensive are not even fluid responsive to begin with. So that ends up being fluid that adds up. And again, this was the mean. Continuing on, the secondary endpoints, which are also important, show that the patients who receive 
passive leg raises as well as stroke volume evaluations had a, had a decreased requirement for renal replacement therapy. Which means, you know, everybody has this concept where they think that giving people more fluids is beneficial to the kidneys. But that is not actually true and the data suggests it and this study suggests it. With a number needed to treat of only 8.1 to see some benefit and some avoidance of renal replacement therapy, i.e. dialysis. So this is another study that proves that patients who go into acute kidney injury don't need more fluids. That's, that's a prehistoric way of thinking and we need to do better than that. In addition to that, the patients who had the passive leg raise performed as well as stroke volume uh, evaluation, they had a decreased requirement for mechanical ventilation with a number needed to treat of only 6.1. <laughs> I know... <laughs> I, I don't know how many of you practice at the bedside, but intubating people because we volume overload them is, is embarrassing these days. We, we should not be, you know, we should not be needing to place people on the ventilator with all the risks associated with being put on a ventilator, which include, you know, just, just the process of intubating the person, giving them sedatives, giving them uh, two Vs. You know, it's not, not necessarily that the two Vs are, are a big deal, but... Um, the trauma, the length of stay, everything that goes together with putting somebody on a ventilator. If we could do just this simple step of passive leg raise with, with stroke volume assessments, if we could avoid people getting on the ventilator, that'll be a great thing for our patient populations as well for uh, cost overall for the hospital. And in addition to that, more patients were discharged home. You know, and when I say home, I mean to their house house. Not to a skilled nursing facility, not to hospice, uh, not, to, not to a rehab place. More patients were discharged home if they had the passive leg raise performed with stroke volume assessments. And the number needed to treat here was only five, which is pretty cool. Now, there were other secondary endpoints that they didn't find differences in. And those include the ICU length of stay, the hours of ventilator use, hours of vasopressor use and the change of serum, change in serum creatinine. So just keep in mind that it's not going to fix everything, but it does help out with a number of things. So the question that I'm very, very often asked, and in this particular study, they used bioreactants, which uh, some of you commercially know as the, as the cheetah machine, which I personally do not have any experience with that machine, but nonetheless, it's, it's cumbersome to actually do passive leg raise because it takes about five minutes to do the whole process, which I've covered before on my Instagram account. And I'll probably cover here at some other point if you guys think that it's necessary or you would like for me to do it. But you need one of the following. First of all, a fancy machine. Whether you use pulse contour analysis or uh, bioreactants, th these are things that are going to cost the, the hospital money. Um, there are other other things you could do, like you know, float a swan in a person, or do some other sort of thermal dilution, which is considered invasive flow directed catheter derived cardiac output. Again, I know that we were talking about stroke volume in this particular study, but cardiac output is another way that we could do it, which also has a pretty good sensitivity and specificity. The other thing is that you have to have the ability to perform echo Doppler measurements, and again, this goes back to it being cumbersome to actually you know, when you go ahead, you have the patient sit up and, and you move them through all the different maneuvers that, that entail the passive leg raise procedure. Being able to do uh, echo during that whole time is going to be cumbersome and time consuming for the clinician. And if you have, you know, 20 patients on your list, that might not be clinically feasible. However, it, it is worth considering and finding ways to facilitate this for yourself by either training other people to do it for you, or I don't know, I'll let you sort out all those uh, issues. There is also the ability to use end tidal CO2 to help with the cardiac output slash cardiac index monitoring. But in this case, you need to have somebody who has a stable ventilatory status as well as a stable metabolic status to uh, notice that they have a difference in their cardiac output, cardiac index. And then there are other less popular methods, which one could consider too, that I probably don't even know. Uh, and I will skip for the, for the sake of this um, presentation, but nonetheless, I, yep, that's, this is a 
sneak peek at another different study part of me there but overall just to go back thanks for watching my video 